everyone doing? Good? Awesome. Been enjoying it so far? Getting back on it? Steelers back and everything? Awesome. What days are you enjoying it? Oh, are you kidding me? Best time of year. <laughs> Best time of year. It's all football. That's it. So. We heard Caleb's been having a pretty good summer. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, he's had a good, really, you know, dating back to the spring, right, January. From the time I've got here, he's had a great stretch, um, which is so important. I think every specialist kind of has a, a unique curve. You know, in terms of their development, especially somebody like him that's been thrust into, you know, the role that he's in in terms of being a, a, a true punter now because he was kind of a very raw punter coming in. And so, you know, last year I think there were some ebbs and flows, obviously. But then, so this this offseason is all about, like, hey, let's get some conviction behind what you're doing. Understand the whys behind what you're doing all the time. And that consistency is going to come. And, like, and then with that comes confidence. And that's what we really started to see from him. You know, I know Coach, I think, elaborated to him going to the – down to like hammer kicking 40 and doing the college competition with guys and actually won the competition versus some really good punters from all over the country. And I think when he came back from that, it was like, okay, you know, I can be special at this. And you know, I'm just proud of him because that's the work that he's put in. It's, it's only him that's done that, and that's awesome to see as a coach. So was it mostly mental stuff with him, or was there mechanical things that you needed? I think it's a, it's always a mixture of both, right? Like I think there was some mental in terms of just the confidence level, um, and then the second piece of that obviously is the technique. And, and, and that all kind of starts to gel together. And once it starts to gel together, guys get really, really good. Where was that camp? Oh, that, that uh, down in Orlando. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I know Ben Sauls, you know, Adam Tanalski did a great job with those guys, you know, across the country. Um, and he's one of the best and, and a good human being too. And so he does a great job setting up camps for, for high school guys and then obviously for college guys too to come back that, you know, and kind of pay, pay their dues a little bit. You know, they, they, they came up through his camps so they get to come back and work and then also compete and get some instruction, which is awesome. Pat said that he gave you credit for getting Caleb's mind right. What did, what did that involve to get me as far as a coach? Sure. Well, I, I mean, I think I alluded to it in my first interview about just, I mean, he's special. Like, when you watch him punt, like, he has tremendous late speed. And so from there, it's just it's just getting him to see that in himself. And I think a big piece of that is the consistency. You know, and so we, we minimize the things and the thoughts in his mind. Right, we minimize it to two or three things that then he can go out there and just grind on those one thing, two things every other day, whatever it ends up being. So then now he can go out there and be confident. Because when you go out there, it's not different in golf, right? Like you go out there and you're thinking about 100 different things. Well, good luck actually doing the one thing you're supposed to do, and that's make the hit a pure shot, right? It's the same thing as a punter, you know? And, and I'm a big believer in obviously in game day, I'm going to put those guys in situations to be successful. Um, that obviously handling wind and, and different things like that and our different sets that we can do. You know, so that way they can go out there and have the most uh, confidence knowing the man and they can go do their job. You've been looked at as a pretty effective special teams coordinator at your previous stops. Um, coming in here, what are you trying to implement that worked at some of those places that maybe was missing here? I think it's just the excitement around special teams. Um, and I think it's, it's throughout the, the entire program. It's not just me as a special teams coordinator. Right, like, and with the passing of the new rule, with the GAs and QCs being able to do stuff, you've got young guys that are hungry to be coaches that are that are going all out during practice to coach the special teams, and our and then our position coach do a phenomenal job, and so and then when in the meeting room we created a, a fun environment, um, to say the least, and so because of that, like guys, they just it, it's contagious, and and guys are flying around right now, and it's it's been really really pleasantly surprising where they're at right now. Um, and again, because we have great specialists, that always feeds into it. You know? we, we see you flying around the field during practice uh, with the high energy. Do you think this team needed that type of wake-up call with that type of coaching to infuse that energy into them? Uh, you know, it's hard for me to say what was happening before I got here. I know, obviously, Coach Narduzzi is, is, is as good as there is when it comes to having a plan and a vision for his program. He's been doing it for a long time at a, at a very high level. Um, and so, obviously, he brought us in for a reason. He knew the energy that we all carried in, in how we go about business. And so I think for, I mean, obviously, I think that was a big piece of why you look at the offensive staff and, and somebody like myself, you know, why I got hired. Another um, guy that's been mentioned a lot, Danny Orock. Um, what has he been able to do, and, and what do you see in him? Uh, Danny is, uh, man, he's, uh, he does it all, man. Like, it's, I don't think a lot of people understand, you know, what it takes to be a special teams and quality control, especially during fall camp. I mean, it is a long day in a lot of isolation. Um, I did it for, for a couple of years, and it's, it, I'm not going to sit there and say it's fun necessarily. You know, it's fun when you're on that field, but then you get in there, and we, we get a lot of reps during special teams, and he's labeling names. I mean, he's in there from, at his computer from pretty much this time until, you know, meetings, and he's back at it, charting stuff, and then getting the meetings ready. And, I mean, to have somebody like that with me that I've been with before, I mean, I can't tell you guys enough how, how 
how much I appreciate it and how much better it makes my job because I know that Danny's going to make sure all of our ducks in order so then can focus on the personnel and, and he's got a ton of energy too and you know he's got a bright bright future in his, in his profession. Speaking of the enthusiasm and energy you bring to your job, where did, where did all that come from? Where did you, where you acquire that kind of mindset? Uh, you know I think a lot of it obviously is I've always been a pretty hyper person. Uh, I've always loved to compete um, but you know what, like it goes back to my parents, we had great parents at home, you know, my mom and dad, um, you know, my dad, like he always just tell us like, if you're going to do something, you're going to do it the best that you can, you know, no matter what you're doing. And so that's something that's always stuck with me. And, you know, it, and it, even in the ups and downs of life, like, and, and even in this profession, like, you know what, I get to step foot in, a, in an awesome facility with great people. I get to coach a game that I love and, and be around and influence people's lives. Like, what isn't there to be excited about that? You know the wins and the losses. That's all a byproduct. But what 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 better thing to do? You get to stand up in front of the entire team and, and have some fun and, and get the most out of them and hopefully see those guys reach their potential. How about the kick and punt coverage and looking at who are some of the guys that are standing out in that department? Yeah, punt, punts have looked really well. You know, obviously it goes back to Junko kicking the ball in the right spots and great hang time, and he's done a good job with that. You know, coverage wise, you know, Lineham's done a, an unbelievable job. I know he had done some stuff back at Nebraska. He's done a good job. Um, you know, some of our linebackers have done a great job. You know, it's, it's the usual suspects in terms of special teams that you want to see. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really excited about where we're at. And we got a lot of depth right now. That's, that's the other fun piece. It's not, it's, it's not just a couple handful of guys. Like, there's a lot of guys that you turn the tape on. You're like, man, I can't wait to see that guy flying around. When we talked to Pat and Jamie about the receivers, he said, you know, we need to go, you know, six, seven, eight deep. Which is how fast we're going to move. We're going to rotate a lot of guys in. How much does that apply to tight ends? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think a lot of it's hard to say going into a game because the, the ebbs and flows of games, you know, the adjustments that you may have to make within the course of the game, it makes it kind of difficult to say this is how much snaps a guy's going to get. I think the tight end position is a unique, unique spot in the sense of you're going to have different guys in there throughout the course of the game. Just because, of, again, with us going tempo, the receivers are built for that a little bit more than, than is a Gavin Bartholomew who's 250 pounds. You know, so naturally you're going to have to give him some blows every now and then and spell him. And so there's a little bit more uh, uh, role by committee in the tight end room. Who have you looked at so far to fuel punts and kick returns so far? Uh, there's a bunch of guys. You know, I think, you know, Mumps has done a great job. He's taking a lot of pride in it. Um, you know, like I've told him, it's a good opportunity to, to just add something to your resume to the next level. Uh, Kenny Johnson, um, you know, Des Reed, uh, Che, um, you know, it's really the same kind of guys that, that have always been back there. And you know, there's some young guys too that we're trying to develop, like a Tyreek Robinson, and some other guys there that, that can help us out, hopefully in the future. Talk a little bit more about Che Wabuka. I mean, we haven't really heard a lot about him um, throughout camp so far. What have you seen from him? Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's obviously really, really fast. Um, you know, he's, he, he's, he's working to be physical. Um, and and he's, a, he's a guy that's been working hard in, in the classroom and learning the offense. And um, so I think he's, in, he's on the right trajectory where he needs to be for his development and what we're going to need from him as an offense or on special teams units as well. How has uh, Ben Sells improved over this offseason? You know, his biggest thing has been, Ben is, uh, and I don't know if you guys have seen him, but Ben's enjoying being out on the football field. And, and because Ben, I've said, I think I said it in one of my interviews, I mean, he's a fierce, fierce competitor. And, and sometimes I can get the best of him because he wants to be the greatest and he wants everybody around him to be elite and great. And sometimes that can be frustrating for him. Um, and so for him, that's been my challenge. Like, man, you've, you've had an unbelievable career and, and you've also had some downs in your career. So like, what better way to finish this thing off than just going out there and enjoying the moment every single day, enjoying the process. And you're so talented, like those results can take care of himself. That's what it's been for him. Like he's, he comes in and he's got a good attitude and he never had a bad attitude, but he's just enjoying being in the facility and out on the field. And it's awesome to watch. Two of your hours in this building, how do you think the split breaks down between tight ends offense and special teams? How you spend your time? Uh, I mean, golly, I'd be lying if I said I don't think about special teams all the time. Because it, my thing is this, you're sitting there watching practice film, and that's why I think there's a ton of benefit being a special teams coordinator and a position coach. Because sometimes you get in there and you're a special teams coordinator and you're kind of looking at things through a straw a little bit. You're not seeing the entirety of that football player. And so when you sit there in the offensive room and you're watching an offense, well, now I'm watching every single guy on the offense, how they block on the perimeter, what their movement skills look like, and then flip it around. I'm watching the defensive players. 
than what they look like in space. And guys that are, you know, there's some young guys that you're like, man, that guy, he's going to have it. You know, like, I don't know if it's going to be early. But man, that's a guy we got four speed. And so it's it's nonstop, you know, and it's no different than, than in my mind being a head coach. Like Coach Narduzzi's got a lot on his plate, and he's got to kind of compartmentalize things, and that's what makes being a special teams coordinator unique as well. And, uh, but, I mean, I can't, I mean, I'd say half and half because it's kind of all the time. You know, you don't really turn it off. And I wouldn't say when it's just in this facility, you know, my wife knows I bring it all home too, so she hears about it as well. Is Upa going to be your long snapper? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. He's done a great job. He's earned that job, and he's done a really good job of coverage. So I'm really proud of him, the growth that he's made in that. And again, shout out to Danny Orock for that. Like he, he works with them a ton with that, and they watch film. And, and uh, you know, I couldn't be happier with where he's at there. What about Mount? Yeah, Mount Ty Thomas was talking yesterday. What do you see from him in the development of your special team? Malachi is a, uh, a confident individual, which I'm sure you guys picked up on. Um, Malachi is, is very, very athletic. He's physical. You know, and it's everything you expect from a guy that's from a, a South Georgia program that went 15-0 and won a state title. You know, I mean, he is all about football. And, I mean, he's in there late at night, every night, grinding out, going through the plays and going through everything. And he's asking questions. And, and I give a lot of credit to guys like Gavin and Jake Overman. You know, they, they, they freaking pour into him during practice. And they, and they talk to him afterwards and kind of bring him along. And so and that's, that's what you want to have in your room. You know, when you've got a young guy that's talented, you want that guy to be able to get developed by everybody. You know, that's kind of what's happened, and I'm really proud of Malachi for where he's at. He's got a long way to go, but he's going to keep doing that.